This is what many fans and rappers have been waiting for. On March 8th, Takashi69 posted to his Instagram, When I left and took a break, I didn't say a word to no one. I didn't need to explain nothing. I just did it. I woke up and now I want to take over again. Now get out of my way. The King of New York is back. Now following that Instagram story, 6ix9ine posted a snippet of his new song. He also added a caption to it saying, I hope everyone enjoyed their 15 minutes. The boy is back April 15th. I'm the beast they couldn't contain. The industry's most hated animal. April 15th, the King of New York is coming back. I'm coming home. Don't get caught on replay. Now with the snippet 6ix9ine posted, this got many reactions from rappers, but also the street members that 6ix9ine snitched on. A day after he posted his snippet video, the spot that he recorded in was vandalized. As reported by DJ Academics, this video was posted. They vandalized that place that 6ix9ine recorded a video at. They wrote rat all over it. Now 6ix9ine commented on DJ Academics post. He said, what the building do to them? Sliding with graffiti cans. Okay, got it. Now all of this got the attention of Fabio Foreign as Fabio has now become the largest rapper in New York City. He posted this reaction on Twitter. Five billboards in Times Square, top five songs in New York, on Apple at once, and articles in both Daily News and New York Times. Don't ever let that man say he's the king of this city. Now this is when we then saw 6ix9ine reply to Fabio saying, didn't his best friend get hit in his head a month ago? He's worried about billboards in Times Square with several laughing emojis. Now it didn't end here with Fabio Foreign. The first week numbers of his album he just released, Bible, was released to the public. Now being on pace to sell 29k units first week, 6ix9ine replied to this saying, This is y'all's king, not blackballed. All of those features, the whole industry promoted that. And now you have Kanye and Nicki's sidekick, they even tried to help you promote it. So this isn't the first time we have seen 6ix9ine resort to bringing up people that have passed in arguments and beefs that he tries to create online. As everyone remembers, when King Von sadly passed, 6ix9ine, he did a lot to Lil Durk. Now 6ix9ine posted a selfie of him wearing King Von's face on a t-shirt. He added a caption to that saying, He really thought y'all loved him. He believed y'all. If he ain't slide for his brother who got hit in his head, then you thought different. With once again, the classic 6ix9ine laughing emojis. Now don't be surprised when this new song drops that 6ix9ine absolutely goes at Fabio. Many rappers consider this interesting timing of 6ix9ine's return. As over two weeks ago, 6ix9ine revealed to a judge that he is broke and he is struggling to get by. This is when WAC100 on the Clubhouse app reacted to 6ix9ine being broke. WAC100 confirms that 6ix9ine has nothing. He even says that he gave Takashi 6 9 $20 for gas before. Now many believe that 6ix9ine released this new song as the rapper is right now being sued for $11 million in a civil lawsuit. This all started from a 2018 robbery that he was involved in. Now this robbery begins with members of Nine Trey and Takashi 69 scouting out and following two individuals. They go by the name of Sakitha Wanzer and Kevin Dozier in New York City. One of the two individuals were robbed by members of Nine Trey with the use of firearms. Meanwhile, the other individual was an innocent bystander who now claims they have PTSD. Takashi 69 filmed the entire incident from a nearby SUV with the window rolled down as this robbery happened happened in the lobby of a hotel. Now the rapper and his crew mistakenly believed these two men were members of rap -a -Lot Records, which at the time, 6ix9ine was having lots of beef within the industry. 6ix9ine admitted he recorded the robbery during his time snitching in court on 9 Trey. 6ix9ine claims it was his manager's idea. The two individuals involved are suing Takashi for $5 million each. This is when we saw 6ix9ine reveal he has absolutely nothing and is struggling to get by. 6ix9ine said, this in court. I did receive large advances under the recording artist and merchandising agreements prior to my arrest. However, 
I do not receive any royalties under those agreements either, since my royalty accounts remain unrecouped. I have had to try to restart my career after my release from prison. I was out of the business for two years, which caused me to lose all of the momentum I had achieved before I was arrested. I may never reach the same level of success I had before my arrest. Also, because of the real world issues affecting the world, my ability to generate income from touring has been greatly reduced. Live concert revenue was a big part of the money I used to make as an artist. That is no longer the case now. I did not do any concert tours in 2021, and I have none booked for 2022. My present income supports myself, my two children, their mother, my mother, and my brother. My accountant, Justin Kobe, knows exactly what my existing assets and sources of income are. And I rely upon my accountant for providing this court with that accurate information under a separate declaration submitted along with the defendant's pre-inquest submissions. Right now, I am struggling to make ends meet. I don't know if I will ever command the kind of advances I was once paid before my arrest and career stalled. If the courtroom awards the damages sought by plaintiffs at this inquest, it will surely bankrupt me in a way and from which I will never recover to the hardship of my family members who rely upon me. Signed, Daniel Hernandez, otherwise known as Takashi69. 69's accountant Justin Kobe mentions that the Gummo's rapper net worth is technically less than zero. So what 6ix9ine revealed in court gives a lot of insight on why he is now returning to music. So following those documents, this photo was then attached to those court files, showing Takashi 6 ix summary of income and expenses for the year of 2018 to 2022. Just so you know it's legit, for the year 2020, you'll see the $10 million deal he signed following him snitching his way out of prison. In that record deal, 6 9 signed away all of the rights to his music, as when you look at his balance sheet, 6 9 doesn't have much left. Which explains why in the year 2022, Takashi 69 has only made $27,000. Meanwhile, his YouTube channel has generated over 30 million views in the last month which that alone would estimate $150,000. So it hasn't been reported if 6 9 signed a new record deal yet, but this new song may be his first of many as an independent artist. But many rappers thought that 6 9 disappeared because he has no record label anymore. But other rappers suggest that he left due to members of OTF and Oblock catching him slipping. Allegedly, in this video I'm about to share, are members of OTF running up on 6 9 while he was sitting in his parked vehicle. Things didn't get too crazy as they were in the streets of New York, which is constantly filled with law enforcement. 6 9 has not been having the regular security lately as he obviously can't afford it like he used to. But here's the video I'm talking about. So after this video went around, a very concerning photo of 6 9 was then brought up. In this photo, you see 6 9 getting a cast put onto his arm. A second photo was attached to it, but I can't share due to 6 9 having many bruises on his face. Many people believed this is why 6 9 disappeared from the music industry. It does make sense, but you could also make the argument he didn't have a record label, so he didn't want to release music, as he doesn't know how it will perform as an independent artist artist. But there was Fabio Foreign, Lil Durk, and WAC 100's reaction to 6 9 returning. I hope you enjoyed. I'm out. Peace.